Hey everybody, in this video we are going to go over Open Broadcaster Software, otherwise known as OBS. We're going to go over how you can set it up to live stream on Twitch. Now the best part about it is, is it's completely free and extremely easy to set up. Now first you're going to set up a new profile by hitting Profiles and then New. And we will name this one How to Live Stream. Next you'll enter your settings through settings drop down and then click on settings and you'll see that your profile is already loaded here and then next you'll go to encoding and you're gonna see a bunch of stuff here which is pretty much already set up for you encoder you'll want to leave as is use CBR is recommended when you are live streaming as well as leaving enable CBR padding checked as well the one thing that you will want to to change is your max bitrate you'll see it says you generally want to set this value to a value below your upload bitrate. Use a site such as speedtest.net to determine your upload bitrate, and that's very important. It's recommended to set this up to 80% of your max upload, and that's if you have a strong connection and a little bit better computer. Now you can adjust this as needed. Now you can actually stream, keep a window up of your live stream because there's gonna be a little bit of a delay, and you can actually get a good idea of what your stream looks like and how it sounds. Now, if you have a strong connection, you can certainly go and do some stuff. Speedtest.net looks like this. Ignore all the ads, wait till it pops up, and then click Begin Test, and you'll get your results there. It'll show your download and upload speed. Your upload is the second one there. Since we have a somewhat strong connection and a decent computer, and we are running at 1080, we're going to go ahead and put ours up to 3500. If you're going with something like 720, you might want to lower this number, or if you have a little bit weaker connection, keep it lower as well. 1000 is probably about as low as I would stream it myself, but like I said, you can generally see the quality by checking your own stream. Your audio encoding basically follows the same principles, but it's okay to just leave this as a default 96. You can go ahead and hit apply and those changes will be accepted. Next, you go to your broadcast settings and you can see that it's already set up to live stream. Once you register on Twitch, you'll actually get a stream key and you just enter that in here and you can adjust these settings to your liking and it's very easy you just copy and paste it in there and that's all you have to do you apply that and you're done next you can go to your video settings your base resolution you will leave the exact same your video adapter should already be selected especially if you're running a video card there next is very important the resolution downscale if your computer can only handle so much I would recommend dropping the resolution on here. If you have something, it depends on your aspect ratio, you can drop this down to like say 720. It's very important. I actually did this for a long time myself and that opens up the filter drop down menu here. And again, depending on how strong your computer is, you're going to choose a different filter. The lower on here, the better. And you actually see it says best detail, good detail, and fastest. That's kind of important when you're looking at stuff but you can generally leave that as is but if you're having a little bit of trouble feel free to drop that your viewers aren't going to miss much in terms of your viewing now your frames per second you can pretty much just leave it 30 and you'll be perfectly okay if you're a windows 7 user you might want to disable arrow depending on how you use this and that is the little button down here at the bottom to where it makes everything disappear you can apply those settings hit yes and move on to the next your audio settings there is your desktop audio device. You can choose your speakers there. But more importantly is your microphone. If you want people to hear you, you might want to select the, the right microphone. Since we are using a blue snowball, we'll go ahead and use that. If you need to boost anything, like I said, you can watch your own stream, get an idea on how everything's running, and listen accordingly and adjust this accordingly. Apply that. Move on to the next. Now your hotkeys, if you don't want to exit the game but you want to start and or stop your stream, you can certainly go and set up your shortcut keys here. You just enter in whatever you want and we can enter Control shift v Control shift b anything you want, any combination. You can even make it a one character one. I would not recommend that. You can apply that, move on to the next. Your advanced settings you're not going to mess with. The only thing that you might want to look up maybe is use CFR uh, and your custom settings here. I generally would recommend staying away from that, although there is really good information out there on how to utilize all that. You can ignore quick sync encoder and go on to your microphone noise gate. I actually had to up this a little bit myself, but again, listen to your own stream, understand where you need to up and lower this, and you're going to be fine. 
apply that, and that's all you have to do. Now, the last remaining scene, or the next remaining part, is adding the scene, and then of course the source. Now, we're going to add a scene, and we'll just call this Diablo Livestream, because we're going to be playing a little bit of Diablo. So we'll hit OK, and you're going to see that we have no sources. Now, how do we get those sources? Now, you can just right-click in the Sources tab and hit Add, and you can hit Game Capture or Window Capture or Monitor Capture, whichever you choose. But since we're doing a game here, you could hit Game Capture. But we're actually going to set this up a little differently. You're going to go into your Global Sources here. Just left-click on this, and you're going to see a couple different things here. Now, we already have a few things set up, but we want to add a new one. So we're going to add a game capture. So we just hit Add Game Capture, and we will call this one Diablo 3, because that's what we're going to be doing. And then you're going to see Select Application here. Now this gives you all the different things that you can set up here. Now you'll see Diablo 3 here. If you have the game open, it's going to be there. If you don't have the game open, open it, and then hit Refresh on this, and it will populate in the list. Go ahead and click the game of your choice. Hit OK you're going to see it there in the global sources. Now, if you do want to stream, if you have a webcam and you want to add that, feel free to check out our other video, how to add a face cam or a webcam to your stream because it works the exact same in a stream as it does on a recording. I will leave that in the description below. You can now hit OK and you're good to go. We still don't see anything in the sources. So you right click there, you scroll over, add, and then you go down to global source and you'll see that our new source that we just made is now added on here. It defaults to the name there, however you can certainly change it to whatever you like. Hit OK and you're going to see it's checked. Now before you start recording or start streaming, it's very important to go ahead and preview what you've got going on. Now we put this in windowed mode so that we can make this a little bit easier to see. So we hit preview stream and now you see that we are previewing what we would be streaming out there and it is of course the Diablo game that we just set up in our scenes and in our sources and you are good to go. That's it. There are no more steps involved and that is all you have to do to set up a live stream. Once you have that key in there in the key settings you simply go to twitch.tv and go to your live stream, go to your dashboard and you'll be able to view everything there. So that's it. I appreciate you guys watching. If you do have any questions or comments about the video feel free to leave those below. Now, if you like the video and you want to leave a comment and let me know what you think about it, feel free to leave that below as well. But if you like it and you don't have anything to say, feel free to hit that like button because I would definitely appreciate that. Now, we're going to be doing more tech tip videos in the near future, so if you want to be available for those, feel free to hit that subscribe button and be on the lookout for those. I appreciate you guys watching. Till next time, see you guys later.